Good morning, folks. couple important things to run through this morning, including an update to last night's posting. We're going to begin with the last 24 hours on our star over at spaceweathernews.com. Looks relatively benign, but with perhaps the slightest of activity building near the sunspots and vertical filament that's turning past center disk. That is where the tiniest of flare flashes are taking place right now, even if they are still stuck in B-class range. The solar flares could jump up into C-class range today, however, as it's not just the big departing group, but a couple behind them incoming. Delta magnetism in the lead, turning away, with actually a good bit of magnetic potential in the smaller groupings despite their diminutive size. Wouldn't be a shock to get a flare or two before these active regions disappear completely. Solar wind, that's a calm couple of days there. We're settling into a quiet slow stream now, which is causing a measure of stability to return to Earth's magnetic shield. And one cannot even say when the next stream is due, as it's difficult to tell which or if either one of these coronal holes will hit center heliographic latitudes. But we did begin another quake watch, if you'll recall yesterday, and south of Australia they were happy to begin that for us. After 24 hours of the South America watch, they are slightly above average in occurrence and magnitude, but no magnitude 6 events thus far. Last night, we posted about North Korea likely testing a large bomb as explosion signatures rang seismographs at a depth of nearly zero kilometers, near where all the other nuclear tests had taken place. And now the North claims a successful test of a 10 kiloton bomb, their biggest yet, which still seems kind of small compared to the other notable bombs of this nature throughout history. Coming back to quakes, we'll quickly mention that quakes triggered by other quakes is an idea that paper after paper seems to be coming to. This one actually falls outside our group's standard understanding of things like blot transmigration, so it's an interesting new piece of information. Also this one out of NASA, the nebulae are within our Milky Way allegedly, obscured in visible light, and while the Star Trek drawing is quite clever, my mind wanders to the cause of sister nebulae managing to be twisted into such similar shapes when randomness of gravity should be dominating. NOAA put out the U.S. climate report for the last month. No shocker on the precipitation map with many records falling. Minimum night temperatures were back and forth with no general rule in play except that the middle of the days were not quite getting as hot. We're going to look at these on a regional scale as well. If all goes according to plan, we'll get a deeper look out today and then our weekly podcast show tomorrow morning. If you missed the update to spaceweathernews.com slash challenge, it has the details and verification tools from going 6 for 11 in last year's location-based quake prediction trial, plus our email exchanges with the USGS. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.